It's October 18th. It's early muzzleloader season here in Iowa. And for the 10 or 11 years that I lived here in Iowa, I've never gotten the early muzzleloader tag. Normally I do the late muzzleloader seasons. I really enjoy that time of year. You get a three week season, but this year changing things up, going with the early muzzleloader tag. And actually now that I think about it, going back to growing up in Nebraska, we used to do a lot of muzzleloader hunts in October, but it was an antlerless only season for like one or two weekends on, on this particular piece of public land. And it was a lot of fun. You know, my brother, my dad and I are friends, but anyways, it's been a long time since I've done those hunts. So it's kind of fun here to get back out with a, a muzzleloader in hand in October. So my plan is to take advantage of the extended range with the muzzleloader, hunt some of these areas that uh, are a little bit more open. But today I'm going into an area that we've hunted a fair amount in the past. Going back to 2018, I know Zach had a, a crazy series of hunts back in here where he, where he was on a, a couple of really nice bucks and then eventually shot a really nice eight pointer off the ground. kayak was pretty much pointless. The water got shallow real fast and I maybe made it a quarter of the way back with the kayak. I didn't think I was gonna make it all the way back in here, but I thought I'd get a little bit farther. But anyways, I just managed to make myself a muddy mess. And uh, one of the reasons I wanted to get going early today is that I wanted to be able to stop and glass all these pockets of willows, all this tall grass in here. There's a lot of good bedding cover all throughout this bottom. So I mean, it, a buck could be bedded just about anywhere in here, but especially around these willows. I could already see there's rubs in this patch of willows down here. There's a lot of oaks in this tree line, a lot of oaks on that ridge right there. I'm gonna work my way down this edge, maybe another 150 to 200 yards. And this bottom branches off in two different directions. I wanna get to that point, that's at least where I wanted to, to get to and, and see how it looked and see what there was for sign. Well, I made it, made it to the spot that I wanted to get to, or at least that I had pinned on the map. So like I mentioned earlier, Zach had that encounter with that buck right here. Uh, I believe back in 2018, maybe it was the same year, he had an encounter with a good buck up in the corner of the timber there. And then if I'm not mistaken, he killed that buck a year later down in this bottom here. So this area right here, we've had a fair number of buck encounters in the past, have found a lot of sign on these transition lines. So my plan is to, to stage hunt into this spot. I've got two more days ahead of me with the same wind direction. And based on what I see from here tonight, be able to work farther back in or adjust or you know do whatever I need to. All right, so I was all excited about my setup here. Got everything ready to go and just remembered that with a muzzleloading rifle in Iowa, you can't shoot across public waters. So, you know, I don't know if that means specifically a, a river or a lake or if a little creek drainage like this that's, you know, got maybe, I don't know, just three, four inches of water. And it, I'm assuming that this, you know, because it's holding a little bit of water that that would fall under that law. So I tried calling several different game wardens and haven't been able to get a hold of any of them. You know, it's a coin toss on what side the deer may come out on. But I should have figured this out earlier in the hunt. You know, I should have thought about it before I even came back in here and had an answer. Again, if there's a buck over there that I want to go after, you know, hopefully I can just slide down in the creek and get on the other side and, and know for sure that I'm legal to shoot over there. It's just got its head buried feeding right now. I'm not sure what it is. It doesn't look overly big bodied. Oh, spike. Little buck. Big 
mature buck. I've already lost sight of him. All right, made it back to the truck here and uh, thought I would take some time to explain kind of what happened at the end of the evening because I, I didn't do a great job of getting it all filmed. But anyways, that mature buck came out. I didn't get to watch him for very long and he, uh, he dropped down into the tall grass and then I could see him making a rub. I can see grass shaking. And then I saw him one time, it looked like he started to break to the right a little bit and then I just completely lost track of him. So once he disappeared, I glassed for a little bit, tried to relocate him. And then just figured, you know, if I was going to have any kind of shot at him at all, I was going to have to get on the other side of the creek. So I got over there and uh, did a couple calling sequences, raked the antlers on some willows, uh, did a snort wheeze. So I just sat there and, until the end of legal shooting time and uh, nothing came of it. Didn't hear or see anything. So I just started slowly working my way through the creek and I didn't make it very far. And then I could hear the buck out in that grass field making a rub and I could hear him walking around a little bit. You know, I just slowly continued to work my way through the creek. And then uh, the other guy that was hunting in the area, all of a sudden he drops down out of the timber, kind of crashing and, you know, making a lot of noise. You know, I thought, uh oh, you know, this may be enough to spook that buck out of that field. So I just stood there and listened to try to gauge that buck's response. And as far as I know, that buck stood there and listened to him walk by. So I don't think he spooked out of there. At least he didn't go blowing out of there. Uh, it's like I said, it's very possible that he knows that there was something in the area tonight when, uh, you know, when the other guy was walking out there making a bunch of noise. But, you know, I, I think as a mature buck would more than likely do, just stood there and listened, wait for the danger to pass by. Oh, and then also, as soon as I got back to the truck, I got a, a call back from uh, the game warden. And he did confirm what I was thinking in that it would have been illegal to shoot across that creek to the other side, even though there's, you know, just a, a few inches of water in it. It's not like it's a major body of water or river or anything like that. The way the rules read is that you cannot shoot a rifle across public waters. It's always good to, to know the, the rules and regulations and uh, to read through them every year and kind of refresh yourself. and. Again, I, I feel kind of silly setting up there in the first place and not, not thinking about that until halfway into the hunt. But uh, again, I still had shot opportunities on my side. And then, uh, and then of course, you know, if, like I said, if a deer came out on the other side, I would have to cross uh, to be able to legally shoot. So anyways, that's how it all went down tonight. We'll see if I can get back on them here in the next couple of days. Well, just a short 10 hours later, after walking past that buck through the creek, I'm heading back into the same spot to try to hunt him again in the morning. I set up on the hillside where that buck had come out the evening before, hoping to catch him coming back from the fields, crossing the bottom, and then going up into the woods to bed. At eight o'clock, I caught movement across the creek bottom. The doe was coming out of the timber, and behind her was the same big 10-pointer. Once again, I lost track of him in the tall grass, but I was completely confident 
that he was going to pop out at about 100 yards and go back up into the timber where he'd come out of the previous evening. So as a smaller buck passes by me at seven yards, I just continue to watch and wait and hope that this big buck is gonna pop out of the grass and head up into the timber. So for the next two and a half hours, I just stayed in the same spot, posted up, ready if that buck stepped out. But it became apparent that they had either bedded down in that tall grass in the bottom, or they had looped around farther to the south and then cut up into the timber at a point where I just couldn't see them. So I waited until 11 o'clock didn't see any other deer, so I decided to back out, met up with Roy for the afternoon, and we came back into the same spot hoping to catch another glimpse of that buck. As we're tucked up in these willows covering this hillside, just before sunset, I could hear deer moving in the grass. Sure enough, a doe pops out, and I told Roy, this is gonna be it, this buck is gonna be right behind her. Unfortunately, the second deer wasn't the buck, it was another doe, but for a minute there, I thought for sure this buck was gonna step out and give me a 10 to 15 yard shot with the muzzleloader. Well, that's gonna do it. We didn't see him tonight. I mean, it was intense having those does come through here because it was two deer. The doe first, I kept thinking for sure. Just gonna see tines over the grass. I thought that buck was gonna pop out at 10 yards. All right, I'm back at it again with a muzzleloader today. The wind doesn't work to go back into that spot tonight, so uh, Roy and I are gonna go down into a different bottom where Aaron has scouted, well, you guys scouted it together, glassed it from a distance, saw a bunch of deer down in here, and then Aaron and Ben hunted it one evening. You know, it's kind of the spot we've been waiting to get into this whole early muzzleloader season. We've got a few days left with a muzzleloader tag, and we got a couple good weather days coming up. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get down in this spot. We call it the gun bowl for a reason because we've had a lot of success in this area with the guns in the past. I think it's gonna be a, a good hunt tonight and if not tonight, tomorrow is supposed to be perfect conditions. So I think we'll, we'll get a chance here in the next couple days. Look at all this duck potato down in here. Big set of tracks there, man. There's tracks everywhere. You can see where they've been browsing on this stuff. It's been quite the education for us here in the last few years on all these different types of natural browse that the deer like to eat when they're available. And duck potato was one of them that was kind of a, a revelation to us. A few years back, this bottom was covered up in it. And uh, we had a lot of good hunts. That was the year Brody killed one down in here that year. And you know, that was in December and then in January. Aaron killed that one down in here on a bitterly cold evening. The deer were coming in and just feeding on this stuff like crazy. And now there's this other kind of vegetation growing up down in here. Here you can see it looks like where deer have been pulling these leaves off right here. It's identifying that as bog yellow cress. And this other plant, I think it's called something called docks. At least that's the genus. Uh, water docks. They definitely like eating these leaves. So, hopefully they're coming out feeding on it tonight. We're about 100 yards away from where we're gonna set up. What we're gonna do is uh, cut some willow branches here. And that's the one tree in Iowa that's legal to cut branches on public lands. It, re it reads something like, you can use natural vegetation for constructing blinds, except that you can't cut trees with the exception of willows. So we've got a big patch of willows right here. Get ourselves a little bit of covered so that way if we get deer coming in close to us, we can uh, hopefully hide a little bit better. And again, with the sun beating down on us, it'd be nice to have a little bit more cover. It's 
4.30 right now, but since we started walking in an hour ago, the weather has completely changed. That front is moving in, and we got the first deer of the evening moving. One of the great things about this spot is that there's just bedding cover all around it. It's an ideal situation. Got these cottonwoods. These cottonwoods don't show up on an aerial photo, but have grown fast enough that they create you know, a decent amount of cover. That and with the willows down in here that, uh, that we're able to cut and fashion a blind allows us to get out in the middle of all this and, and hopefully get within range of a bunch of deer. There's a tree right out here that I think is the tree that Buck was scraping under. So that would be a, that would be an ideal shot to get that buck to come in and, and work that scrape. But this is the start of what should be a couple of good days of hunting here with this colder weather finally coming in after three or more days of 70 plus degree temperatures with south winds. There's a good buck. He doesn't look as mature as the one that Aaron was talking about. Come on, come on. Just keep on a coming. 517. Oh. Hear that roar. that buck that we saw over there. That's right where we want him. If that big one does that, he'll be in trouble. Well, things are looking pretty good here for us. Got probably 10 deer out in front of us. Aaron said when he hunted in here that the uh, the biggest buck didn't show up until about right about sunset. And we're maybe 10 minutes away from that time, five minutes away from sunset. There's that bigger buck to the left. He needs to hustle. Oh, we've got about 15 minutes of legal shooting light left. Oh, it's getting dark fast with this heavy overcast. And so far we've seen four or five different bucks. The bigger, more mature buck that, that Aaron has seen a couple times in here. That's kind of what we're waiting on. The wind has stayed up to the point where you know, if we don't get a shot here in the next 10, 15 minutes, just wait for it to get good and dark and, and slip out of here and hopefully, 
not booger anything. It's a fun evening though. We've got more good weather to come. Well, it's the end of October right now and the muzzleloader season has come and gone back to hunting with a bow. And unfortunately, I ended up eating tag soup for the muzzleloader season. I was holding out for a four or five year old buck and ended up passing up a lot of younger bucks. That next night, I went back in and hunted that bottom with all the green vegetation and pretty much saw the same deer, a bunch of two year old bucks. That, that bigger buck that Aaron had seen never showed up. I also went back and hunted that creek bottom where I had encountered the mature buck a couple different times and never saw him again either. And I ended up hunting a few of our other favorite spots and never saw anything that I wanted to shoot. But regardless, I'm excited to get out, start hunting with a bow again, but first, Finally, we got a successful hunt. Aaron put a great buck on the ground in Missouri. It's an awesome story. Not gonna spoil anything for you, but that's gonna be the next episode. So after a long, long dry spell, all the way through September and into October, we finally got a kill video for you guys. So thanks for hanging in there with us through this dry spell. We've got an awesome video coming up for you on the next one.